Good morning. Welcome to Ra Online. Today, we are going to see the external ear, tympanic membrane and the auditory tube. So, as per the competency in the CBME curriculum, these topics are covered under the AN 40.1, 40.2 and 40.5. Under 40.1, we are going to see the external ear, its parts, blood supply and nerve supply. Under 40.2, the auditory tube and the tympanic membrane are covered and the clinical anatomy pertaining to tympanic membrane namely the anatomical basis of meringotomy will be also explained in these sessions. So, before we go into the external ear proper, I think it is pertinent to know the overall anatomy of the ear and of course, we know what is the major function of the ear to ensure that we hear properly. So, to take care of that function, the ear is made up of three parts. The external ear, the middle ear here. So, the external ear extends from here to here. Then the middle ear which is shown in the purple and the innermost ear which is shown in the blue. So, these are the three parts of the ear of which today in this session, we are going to see the external ear, the external acoustic meatus or the external auditory meatus, the tympanic membrane which serves as a partition between the external ear and the middle ear and the small part of middle ear which is not part of middle ear but it opens into the middle ear which is the auditory tube or the eustachian tube. It is a separate structure by itself, but it opens into the middle ear. So, in this session, we are going to deal with the external ear, the external acoustic meatus, the tympanic membrane and the auditory tube. Everybody is familiar with this picture because we see that in our mirror daily. So, the external ear called as auricle in the medical terminology. There are numerous parts you can see which are actually en enlisted here. If you really want to remember, just remember the tragus, which is a, a important landmark which serves as a landmark for even structures adjacent to it, just to quote a few, the temporomandibular joint, the parotid gland, all those things. So, in auricle, this is the region of tragus. Just opposite to it is antitragus. Anti is opposite. So, tragus, antitragus. And in between the two is the deep notch, which is the tragic, intertragic notch. So, tragus, antitragus, intertragic notch. And then you just need to remember this, a coiled helical structure so named as helix. So, just like tragus and opposite to it is antitragus, this is helix and opposite to it is, opposite to this helix is antihelix. So, this is antihelix. There is a space here which leads on to the opening here and that space is called as concha, shell like. So, this space, the fossa which is between the tragus, just in front of the tragus is the area of concha. So, these are the terms that you need to be familiar with auricle and of course, this is a very, very important part because in terms of histology, the whole of the ear is made up of cartilage except this area which is called the lobule. For those of you who are familiar with ear piercing, compulsorily most of the people, be it women or some of the men, generally the ear piercing is done here a lobule for the simple reason that this is an area devoid of cartilage 
easy for the ear piercing. Of course, we cannot go by that. Nowadays, there are a lot of other areas where ear piercing is done. So, probably the terms that we are now seen here may be more familiar to ear piercing artists than the medical professionals. So, that aside, it's a that aside, what we know, need to know about the external surface of the auricle is the tragus, anti-tragus, intertragic notch, the helix, anti-helix and the scaphoid force, I'm sorry, the concha. And this area which is devoid of cartilage is the obiote.